The last topic we're going to talk about in this unit is a process called calorimetry. And calorimetry is the measurement of energy absorbed or released by a substance in a laboratory experiment. A, a calorimeter is an apparatus or a device used to determine the energy content of foods by burning the food or to determine the specific heat of an unknown substance, right? So I'd like to unpack a little bit about the prefix calorie. When we eat food, there is a certain calorie content of that food. That's telling us the energy amount in the food sample that we're eating, which directly relates to the energy our body absorbs from eating it, which we then use to walk around, breathe, and do all of our daily activities. So when we measure the temperature of something or the thermal energy of something, we use the thermometer. All right, so a thermometer measures the current temperature. A calorimeter, calorie, is the prefix for the unit energy. And so a calorimeter is something that we're going to use to measure the energy of a substance. Again, energy is flowing back and forth. We can't stick a thermometer in something that's burning and measure its energy. We can't even measure its temperature. It'll be too hot. So what a calorimeter is going to do is essentially act as a device that we would refer to as a heat sink. And this device is going to absorb all the energy from an exothermic reaction. And then we measure the temperature change of that device to see how much energy it truly absorbed. Right. So an example calorimeter is this image over here. We've got an empty Coca-Cola can. All right, that's got a small volume of water poured into the bottom of it. The reason we use a Coke can one is because they're cheap. Mostly we just pull them out of the recycling bin and they're thin metal, which means the energy from a nearby reaction can travel through that metal really easily. Metals have low specific heats. So they conduct heat very easily. So we've got this ring stand and a glass bar so that it's kind of hanging over the top of that ring stand. And then down at the bottom here, you notice we've got some kind of a stand. This one's a cork. And then this is actually a Cheeto that has been lit on fire. And so to determine the energy content of that sample of food, we light the Cheeto on fire and all the energy that's stored in it from its burning travels up into the can. And so if we measure the amount of water with the heat capacity of water and its initial and final temperature, we can figure out how much energy the water absorbed from that burned Cheeto. Okay, so how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to use Q equals MC delta T, but this equation is just going to be used for water. Water is actually our calorimeter. That's the device that's absorbing the energy. So we're going to measure the energy the water absorbs by taking its temperature before and after. Uh, to calculate the energy content of the burned material, we're going to say the energy that the water absorbed is equal to the energy that the food sample released. And so a big catchphrase for this particular topic is energy out is equal to energy in. And so when we take that energy transfer and divide it by the mass of the material that burned, we can calculate what's called the energy content. So this is actually a simplified equation down there. And so let's go through a practice problem because once you see one and after we do this particular lab, it's pretty straightforward in terms of the application of the equation, right? So we've got a Cheeto weighing three grams and it's burned in a calorimeter experiment filled with 100 grams of water. So in the can here, we've got 100 grams of water and the water we are told started at a temperature of 25 degrees and warmed up from that Cheeto being burned to 80 degrees. The Cheeto is then massed after the burning and the mass is recorded as one gram. So how much energy was absorbed by the water? Well, we've got a temperature change of the water. We've also got a mass of water and we know the heat capacity for water. So we can use our Q equals MC delta T equation here. The mass of the water is 100 grams. The heat capacity is a pretty standard 
joules per gram degree Celsius, and our temperature change ended at 80 degrees, started at 25 degrees. So the energy that the water absorbed is 80 minus 25 times 4.18 times 100. So Q here is equal to 22,990 joules. Now there's something pretty simple I want to point out, and it's a common mistake. But we've got other masses in our question here, and oftentimes those get mistaken for the mass of the water in this equation. All right, in order for us to be able to use this 4.18, which is the specific heat for water, we have to use the mass of water. This isn't specific heat of Cheeto. Okay, so we use the mass of the water, the heat capacity for water, the temperature change of the water to figure out how much energy left this Cheeto and traveled up into that sample of water in the can. Right? Now the next part is the, again, easy but tricky bit that uses this concept here. If the amount of energy going into the water, we can calculate, we can assume that that's the amount of energy that's leaving the Cheeto as it's burning. So there's really not even an equation for this next one. How much energy was released by the Cheeto? It has to be the same amount. Because the water inside this can didn't spontaneously warm up on its own. It went from 25 to 80 degrees because of that fire energy that was released as the Cheeto burned. Okay? So if I want to figure out the energy content of the Cheeto, I need to use the energy that was released by the Cheeto, but I need to only equate how much Cheeto burned to contribute to this total amount of energy. So I started with three grams of Cheeto, but it obviously didn't burn away entirely because one gram was left over. So my energy content, the energy transfer, divided by the mass of the material that burned is going to be 22,990 joules divided by 2 grams. Again, because we started with 3, we've got 1 left over. So 22,000 divided by 2 means that the content of that Cheeto is 11,495 joules per gram.